Right, uh, hi guys, it is Dan here, and today is going to be the very exciting uh, first instalment in, in a little series that I've decided to do called uh, Non-Fiction Focus. And, um, you know, this is something I've been thinking about doing for a little bit. Uh, you don't get an awful lot of non-fiction, I think, on YouTube, and particularly not the sort of non-fiction that I read. Um, so I don't know if anyone's going to be interested in this. It's going to be a little bit niche. But I just wanted to talk about some of my favourite books and they don't really lend themselves to doing normal reviews. Uh, particularly because I read, I read a lot of history and I read a lot of sort of practical non-fiction. So stuff that will teach you skills. Uh, I like that kind of thing. But they're the kind of books that you, uh, particularly the practical stuff, that you dip in and out of. You're not going to read them from cover to cover. So uh, they're not really good for review videos. But I just thought I'd, yeah, talk about some of my favourite ones, uh, why I like them, and how they've sort of inspired me a little bit, I suppose. So the first book I have picked to focus on is Wild Food by Ray Mears and Gordon Hillman. And now this is kind of um, a combination of the history and the practical stuff, you know, that I was talking about, the two main genres that I like. Um, because Ray Mears, uh, if you haven't heard of him, is sort of like a bushcraft survival trainer type guy. Um, he has done a bunch of TV series where he teaches people, what, or well, he explains, you know, how to do sort of stuff like fire lighting and making yourself shelter out of just stuff that you find in the wild and just you know surviving in different places and and Gordon Hillman is uh, what is known as an archaeobotanist which is someone who studies uh, the historical uses of plants and uh, this book is pretty much uh, a well the the main bulk of this book is a rundown of all the different plants that you can eat and that our ancestors probably would have eaten or at least made use of in um, the pre in a prehistoric period so we're talking hunter gatherer societies you know not sort of agricultural communities or anything like that you know this is pre farming so we're talking people who yeah are going out foraging for their food so as i say for me that combines the the history and the practical know-how stuff that i enjoy reading about um, <clears throat> now this book starts off with a bit of a, a rundown of the, sort of a, a very brief rundown of the the history of you know foraging and, and whatever it talks about um, modern hunter gatherers as well. So uh, Aboriginal society in Australia talks about a bit, and uh, then he talks a bit about you know how to forage. He talks about hunting as well. There's just a small section on that. Uh, and then the main bulk of it, as I say, is uh, it's called the plant foods of our hunter-gatherer ancestors. But this is not just knowledge that is applicable to that time period. I mean, these plants still exist and are prevalent in this country now. So you can go out. Uh, and the reason I got this paperback uh, rather than the hardback, the hardback has more information in it. But the reason I got the paperback is because it is smaller and lighter. So it's good for taking out. If you if you see my audiobook vlogs, you'll know that I, I go out on walks in the countryside, you know, quite regularly. I live in a very rural location. So I can just chuck this book into my rucksack. And, you know, when I come across some of the plants that are in there, I can, you know, it's got a very comprehensive index. So I can just turn to whatever you know page the plant is on so i'm just flicking to one at random here oh this is a good example actually uh so <clears throat> the main bulk of it is stuff like this right and i've turned to the page that's got a red and white clover on it which is a hugely common plant here in the uk and for every one of these plants there's just a there's just a really short section i mean this is that this is the whole section for red clover right it's got a very clear pictures so that you can identify them. Although I would, you know, this you t normally take a field guide along with you as well that's actually specifically for identifying plants because this is really about the uses of them, not identifying them. But, you know, it's got very clear pictures so that you know what kind of thing you're looking for and then you can double check in your field guide. Uh, and then this is a good example here because he's got, uh, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, right, so he's got pictures of the the plant in all different stages so he's got the leaves here he's got the the flowers he's got the seed pods here he's got the dried seeds all different stages of the plant's development and then he talk you through 
how to gather them, how to process them, which bits are edible, which bits, if any, you shouldn't be uh, eating. He tells you, you know, if they're if they're poisonous. He also tells you whether they taste nice. He tells you how hard it is to gather them, whether it's easy to gather like lots, or whether this is just something that you you, you take you like an hour to gather like a little handful or whatever. Right, so I'm out in my yard and I've got the wild food book. So let's see if we can put it into practice now. I know for a fact that I have got some ground elder growing here which is one of the plants that is in this book so let's see if we can find some. Right here we go this is ground elder as you can see it's a bit of a weed uh, and I do try and keep it off my lawn but it kind of grows everywhere. Uh, all this stuff here is ground elder and let's try and find some. He talks about this in his book. He says this was brought over to the UK as a pot herb by the Romans. So yeah, maybe not <laughs> for our ancestors, but it's available. So let's try and find... Here you go. Here's a nice young shoot. We've got ground elder there. So let's give it a try. Yeah, there you go. Tastes alright. Kind of a mix between parsley and coriander. So there you go. Good to know. And for me, this book was really inspiring in a couple of ways. So first of all, it was a fantastic insight into just how our ancestors lived, you know. Because while for me, this, you know, going out and finding some of these foods is just a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a hobby. It's just something that brings another element when I'm, I'm just going on a stroll through the countryside, you know what I mean? But this is how our ancestors would have lived day to day. And this is, they would have had to have done this every day simply in order to survive. So it's quite an eye opener if you actually go out there and do it yourself just to see the amount of, of effort. Not just effort though, the amount of knowledge and skill that, that had to go into that. And the other thing that I found inspiring about this book is that it gives you the ability to go out there and do it yourself. You know, it talks you through the whole process of foraging for food as i say what you're looking for how it's done so you can go out there and and do it yourself and and get a bit of that experience yourself but also discover like a whole bunch of of new foods that you would never have, have heard of before i mean i've discovered some really tasty stuff just like growing in the woods near my house do you know what i mean and to me that is very valuable knowledge to have and it's very inspiring to me to be able to go out and do the same things that my ancestors a hundred thousand years ago would have been doing on a day-to-day -day basis but this is knowledge that is almost lost to most people now what i will say is this book is only really applicable to the uh, uk uh, it only covers plants that are available in the uk but i can't imagine that this kind of book at least wouldn't exist for all kinds of localities all, all around the world you know I, get, I reckon if you're if you're living in the the us or whatever then there are probably similar books to this by obviously different people that are going to cover the the type of flora that is available in in your locality and i would highly recommend that you search those kind of that kind of book out because it really will uh, help to open your eyes uh, and uh, to your surroundings and see them in in a different way not just see the plants that are available as sort of like you know weeds or pretty flowers or whatever but actually be able to look at them and sit and and see the utility of them and as i say that for me that is uh very valuable so yeah anyway i uh, hope you enjoyed that and if you did then let me know in the comments um if you want to see more stuff about non-fiction then let me know as well and uh, i'll probably do another one of these in a couple of weeks but i'll be covering you know lots of different topics i imagine it's not all going to be sort of you know outdoorsy type stuff like i say i've got a load of history stuff i've got a bunch of other you know practical skill based uh books that i read and i do occasionally read the sort of you know uh memoir biography type stuff not very often to be honest but um or you know it, even i've got like a whole bunch of books sports books and things like that so if, i mean if there's any that kind of stuff that you actually uh, are interested in hearing about that you'd what, like me to do uh, a video on then i'd be really interested to hear about that as well so um anyway like i say, hope that was good and uh, i will see you next time